Welcome to my 1cc tutorial for Street Fighter Zero 3 for the arcade. And this is probably my first tutorial on a fighting game. Normally, you know, in these games, I'm always going for the kill to build up my kill list, which is my game's beaten list. And um, I'm normally just trying to exploit the AI, and a lot of the stuff that I do is pretty self-explanatory from the videos. You can see a lot of times how I'm exploiting the AI, usually with simple moves, things like that. Um, you know, I've, I've pretty much dried up a lot of the fighting games as far as when I go through various lists on emulation, I've um, beaten most of the fighting games that aren't in compilations, and I'm starting now to even clean out some of those. So those are like duplicates, you know, where I'm, I'm beating the same games again, pretty much, to clean up the uh, compilation discs and things like that. But um, I decided to make a tutorial on this because there were some really specific strategies that were fresh in my mind, and it was pretty... Um, it ended up being a pretty cool run. So this is the 1cc run you're seeing now, which is going to be the full unedited 1cc run. And then after after that, I'm going to cover some of the other strategies I used on some of the other fighters. So here you're seeing Chung Li is super easy if you fight her first. It seems like whatever character ends up being your first opponent is super fucking easy. So I'm not going to have a good demonstration for Chung Li, but she is one of the harder opponents if you get her as a later opponent. Uh, the way it works is... You have, to, you have to clear out 10 fights to beat the game. And um, basically, like, it depends on what, what uh, opponents the game's going to give you out of the entire fighting roster. So you can fight a large variety of different opponents, and that can kind of determine how your run is going to go, too. If you're not good, you have to be pretty skilled with dealing with all the opponents on the roster because it can throw any of them at you. So... Um, as you keep doing runs of the game, you know, eventually you'll get more familiar with, with, with the other opponents. And uh, this game isn't as hard as some other Street Fighter games. This version, now Street Fighter Alpha 3 seemed quite a bit harder. That's the American version of this, the U.S. version. This Japanese version did seem easier. So it made it kind of interesting to go for a 1cc. The game, if you fail on the final boss, you have to restart the entire game. So that's kind of what inspired me to try for a 1cc. Because I had to get pretty good at it anyway, since I kept getting sent back. Um, like I said, I, I think I said it took me 2 hours and 35 minutes to get to 1cc, maybe an hour and 40-something minutes to just beat the game. So I spent an extra 40-something minutes to, to get the 1cc. Now, this, that, that last character, Sakura, is still not too difficult. Um, now, I don't know if the difficulty scales depending on if you fight certain characters later. That I didn't figure out, but the first character always seems dead easy. They barely react. So the, the, the enemy AI is definitely adjusted for certain things like that. But I don't know if it scales throughout the entire game, you know, gradually. But my main strategy is going to involve, I'm using a turbo controller. Um, the one I'm using has 30 hertz turbo rate. It's a retro flag, um, Sega Genesis 6 button style controller. Um, you know, depending on the speed of your turbo control, it may depend how quickly you can pull off that thousand hand slap that you see me spamming. Which is one of the main things I do here with E-Honda. So... Um, if you're mashing manually, these strategies may not be as viable, so keep that in mind. So it's basically, it's basically I'm only using two buttons to get the 1cc. I'm using Fierce Punch and Fierce Kick, and that's all I ever use. So I, I would just set those to turbo if you're trying to follow the way I'm doing it. That's that's all you really need. And um, I'm also playing defensively on some of the enemies and using the torpedo by, by kind of... Um, First, with that guy, super easy. Those last two fights were very easy. Not much to say about them. My main strategy is to kind of jump and slap the characters into the corner. And then once I get them in the corner, I try to spam this, um, you know, thousand hand kind of slap, which is by mashing the, the punch button, one of the punch buttons. I always use fierce punch. Um, of course, with a turbo control, you can do it nearly instantly. So that really works well for that strategy. But you see, I'm trying to slap the enemies into the corner. I do jump slaps to knock them back into the corner, and then I usually try to spam that, that slap. That's my main strat. That's kind of like the main core strategy I use on most of the opponents, but it, it is subtle differences between the opponents. So first I'm going to show this whole 1cc run, and then after this run is over, I'm going to show about six minutes of fighting some of the other opponents that I fought and beat, and some of the strategies I used for them. So I'm going to try to get... You know, cover a decent amount of opponents. I'm not going to cover the whole roster, but I decided I would try to, you know, cover a few extras that were notable. 
So with birdie, it's really not too different than the strategies I've been using on, on the last three or four opponents so far. It's really, like I said, slap them into the corner and spam that, um, you know, thousand slap type of move. I'm not even really using the torpedo move yet. But you're going to see a more defensive play style that comes out on some of the fights. And there, there are some, some tricks you can do that the AI doesn't deal well with. So with Ryu, if you can get him at about mid-range from your character, you can spam the, the slap move, the thousand slap move, and when he tries to do his fireball, he'll automatically get hit when he tries to do his fireball if you do it right. So what I try to do with him is I don't do a jumping slap with him as much. I, I mostly do jump kicks. Jump kicks seem to work better for hitting him. And of course, the jump kick has a little bit more range than the uh, jump slap does. But I find that the, the AI falls for the jump slap more often than it does the jump kick. That's why I usually prefer to do a jump slap on most of the enemies when I'm doing jumping moves. But I'm mainly using the jump moves to, to knock the enemy back to the corner so I can start slapping the shit out of them with that move. Sometimes I use it defensively if I'm cornered and you know they, they try to jump at me. I also use the jumping attacks to keep them in the corner, which you'll see a little later. You see you got me there. Ryu can be a little tricky. It can be a tough fight, but he's really not that bad. If you can get him in the corner, he'll 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 get fucked up pretty bad by that that slapping move. See, I try to get him in this corner here, and I like to mostly use jump kicks for him for whatever reason. It just seems to be more effective. But see, I'm 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 also jumping in the corner too to kind of keep him pinned. Because if you stay grounded and just spam the the slap move, he may get out of it easier. So I try to jump and maybe jump kick him while he's in the corner to kind of keep him back. And you want to kind of just pin him against that corner and try to finish him off that way. But yeah, even though, you know, this strategy does require kind of a turbo control, I thought it'd be kind of interesting to, to cover this since it did take some, you know, some practice and familiarity with the, with the different opponents to pull it off. Especially, like I said, because you only fight 10 opponents in a row, but you... It can be any 10 from the whole roster, and there's a lot of fighters in this game. So it kind of requires you to be able to adapt pretty well. Even if you're not familiar with some of the fighters like I was, you know, some of them you're going to see I pulled them off maybe on the first try, but I wasn't really familiar with, with them. But, you know, you, I'm using a similar strat. But the thing is I modify it a little bit depending on what's going on in the fight, you know. Uh, if something's not working, I may change it up a little bit. But I, I do stick to the, the basic strat throughout most of the game. There's pretty much two strategies that I use. One is the aggressive, you know, push the guy to the corner and slap the shit out of him. You know, I use the air slaps usually to, to push the guy into the corner and slap the shit out of him. And then the, the other strat that I use sometimes is a defensive strat where I mostly block, hold back, and I, I just keep torpedoing the enemy. And they don't deal well with the torpedo move, but you're not seeing me do that yet. But the torpedo is hard for a lot of the opponents to deal with. It's a good way to get close to the enemy, and it's also a good way to, to get... A lot of like chip damage on them. If you keep doing a torpedo, a lot of times they get hit by it. It does a little bit of damage, but if you keep doing it, you can rack up a lot of damage. And if you're playing defensively, you can actually kind of like stay back and block and then use that thousand slap whenever the enemies get too close and get some damage that way too. So I'm going to show some of that. This guy, he wasn't too difficult, but he is one of the faster opponents. So I'm playing a little bit more defensively here. You see, I'm staying back. Instead of cornering him, now I'm staying more in the back and kind of blocking and trying to fight him from the back, you know, instead of like instead of being aggressive and trying to charge him. So you see, I'm mostly now playing a little bit more defensively. I'm using a torpedo, you see. You can even, if you slap the guy in the air, you can then do a torpedo immediately and get a double combo that way while, you know, torpedoing him in the air after you, you slapped him kind of thing. You see, I'm starting to spam the torpedo now, and that's working well, and I'm playing a lot more defensively so one thing with the torpedo move is it's hold back for maybe two seconds then forward and punch so the thing with that move is that um you can be buffering the commands for that while you're doing other moves so you know you can you can do your thousand slap thing while you're holding back on the on the d-pad and then if you hit forward and punch immediately after that, you can follow it up with a torpedo, like immediately. So uh, that's also a way to get combos in. If you slap the guy, you can torpedo him while he's still um, in the air from your slap. So you get a double hit there. So there's a few tricks you can do with that. Nothing too advanced as I'm, I'm doing pretty simple stuff, but it, it is something that you can do to get some extra damage. 
See, you can juggle the guy in the air with that thousand slap too. You see how I hit the guy in the air and then I use the thousand hand slap to keep him in the air a little bit. You get some extra damage that way and it pushes the guy back to the corner. This is one of the easier fights. Uh, Nash is not difficult. He's very easy to smack around with that move. He's pretty good at dodging the torpedo, though. It's a little bit harder to hit him with that, but you really don't even need to use it on him. You can kind of just slap him into the corner and, and mash the slap move, and it'll work pretty well, as you'll see probably in a moment. You see, I'm kind of just slapping him towards the corner and pushing him towards the back of the screen. I want to get him in that corner again against the wall. And he's not too difficult to deal with. He's one of the easier opponents. If you get him, then it's good luck because it's it should be an easy kill. That's the thing with these 1cc runs. It's kind of also, you know, partially luck of the draw if you're not familiar with all the opponents. I was getting lucky, too, because I, didn't, I had not really dealt with all the opponents before. You know, I was doing multiple runs of the game before I beat it, but I didn't always get, you know, matched up against every opponent. And if I did, it might have been one time or something. So I wasn't familiar with every single opponent. But um, after you see this 1cc run, I'm going to show about six minutes of bonus footage. One of the more, more notable fights is going to be against Sagat, which can be a tricky fight until you realize that he falls victim to repeated torpedoes, and I'm going to demonstrate that. How that. And you don't even need to have that. You don't even need to have a button set to turbo to exploit uh, Sagat. And Bison really don't really need it too much with him either. But the torpedo, you'll see, with the torpedo strats, you can do that no matter what kind of controller you have. You know, you don't need to have rapid fire. So you can implement those tactics at least. If you don't want to use rapid fire, you can at least use my torpedo strats that I found. And, and then you can you know, build your own strategy around that if you, if you want to use this character. Of course, one CC is limited to one character. And um, you know, in this game, if you switch characters at any time on the continue screen, um, you will, it will restart the entire game. So you are you're not really allowed to do that, and same if you die on the, if you lose a match against the final boss like both rounds, then you will also uh, lose the game. So that's why it kind of inspired me to do one CC because I, I almost had to do it anyway. Uh, when I beat the game, I had lost one match, but I didn't lose on the final boss. But I figured, fuck it, I'll just do it a few more times until I get the one CC. Now this is one of the hardest opponents. Um, he's harder than Zangief, but he's very similar to Zangief. Um, and, and, you know, he's lethal at close range. He's one of the most lethal opponents at close range, just like Zangief, but he's harder than Zangief because he's actually more nimble and more dangerous, I find, than Zangief is. But there is a big similarity there with, you know, you want to keep him away from you. So what I mainly do with him is I'm, I'm trying to just play defensively by torpedoing him and staying back and blocking a lot, but... If he gets too close to you, he's going to grab right through your block and fuck you up and does massive damage. So you want to keep pushing him back with either jump slaps, any kind of defensive moves. Torpedoes are great because they don't leave you vulnerable for too long and you can get a quick hit in. So have your torpedoes buffered while you're doing the slap. You know, have a torpedo ready and just bang him out, you know, and get those torpedoes in because they will push him back a little bit and they get in a lot of free damage. With low risk. There's not much risk of, like, if you miss the torpedo, you're probably not going to get hit from this guy. So it's not a huge risk. Uh, which is a similar tactic I use on M. Bison. Or Vega, as he's known in this game. But it's really M. Bison. So basically, yeah, what I'm doing, I'm playing very defensively. I'm using the slap when the guy gets too close to push him back and damage him. And I'm using torpedoes as well. So, you know, the combination of slapping torpedo and just blocking in the corner is very well. And, you know... Occasional slaps and shit to push the guy back, knock him back, and get some damage in. Now, this guy, you cannot fail this fight or you will have to restart the entire game. This is the final boss. The trick with this guy is a very defensive strategy. The problem with this guy is he will like take off more, more than half of your life with one move if you're aggressive. See, you got to be ready to block that or that will take off like all your fucking health almost, you know? So... I was getting hit by that, unfortunately, so my, 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 my way to avoid getting hit by that move is to pretty much block the whole time and mostly attack with torpedoes. The only time I strike him is if he's getting too close to me, you know, pushing me against the back of the screen. But mostly I'm doing torpedoes. You're not going to see it demonstrated too much in this round, but you will see it. But I'm, I'm mostly, like, only attacking when he's right on my ass, you know, like, just to push him back. 
and I'm using torpedoes for most of my most of the time when I'm successful I use torpedoes for most of my damage against this guy because he will take multiple torpedo hits in a row let's see if I can demonstrate it on this round maybe I'll get a better uh, demo of what I'm talking about because I don't remember exactly how this how this match went I had fought him several times before beating it so but torpedoes work really well maybe I'll be able to demonstrate it in this round you can actually get multiple torpedo hits in a row if you do it right. So here's one. See? This is what I'm talking about. This is the kind of chain you can get him in. And that's what I was trying to set up. It's ma mainly doing, you know, most of my damage with torpedoes. And then if he gets too close, you know, mash that thousand hand slap. Or hold the button down in my case. And if you get him in a corner like this, nice damage. Because you push him against the corner and he gets stuck. So you want him against that corner. If he teleports right in that corner, it's great. Now that was a really close round. Not the best demonstration, but hopefully that kind of shows some of the more defensive strats. With M. Bison, it's mostly about doing torpedoes to get that damage. And, and if he gets too close, use that thousand slap and you know just push him back. Jump slaps also work good on M. Bison to push him back and to do some damage if, if he's getting too aggressive. You only do that when he gets close, though. You want to play very defensively. If you try to, like... Go out on M. Bison, or Vega as he's known in this game. He'll destroy you because he'll he'll do that move that takes like half or three-fourths of your health. And you won't be blocking it. So, you want to be ready for that. So, yeah, basically just defensive play style. And, and you should be able to do it. So, now I'm showing some bonus fights here. The main feature is going to be Sagat. Because he can be one of the harder ones. But there's an easy trick. So... This guy, this was some of the extra fighters that I had from one of my other successful runs where I beat the game. So I just added these in. I didn't want to add any doubles, so I didn't add any redundant fighters into the video to show them again. But I just added the, the unique ones that I was um, faced off against. Now this guy was, was pretty easy. I mean, not too bad. He is aggressive though, but the same strats still, you know, applied about just kind of playing a little bit defensively. I wouldn't go super aggressive on him. I would say he's more of a defensive. You, if you notice, I have two main strats that I that I alternate between. Some enemies I, I play defensively against, like like Vega or M Bison as he's called um, in the U.S. version. But um, other characters I play all out aggressive. I push him against the corner and just slap the shit out of him, you know. And that's what I'm doing here with this character. And that's what I do with most of the opponents. But there's a few of them where I had to use that defensive method, and it, it works pretty well. And this character is not too notable. She's not too difficult, though. I think she, she may have almost got me on one of the rounds, if not beat me one round. But she really shouldn't be too dangerous. She's definitely not one of the harder opponents. Like I said, I'm still unsure about how difficult he scales in this game. Like, if you fight her as the 8th opponent or the 7th opponent, will she be harder than if you fought her as the 2nd opponent? I'm not sure. I know that the first opponent seems to always be super easy. I think they dumbed down the difficulty for the first fight. Because it's an arcade game, I'm sure they're trying to give you a false sense of confidence. You know, so you pay more money. But you see, this time it was pretty effective, the aggressive technique that I've been using on most of the opponents. So you can see how that, when, when that goes well, that's how it goes. This guy can be kind of dangerous until you realize that if you keep a little bit of distance from him, most of the time, he's going to slide into your slap move, your uh, thousand slap special. So you don't really have to be super aggressive when you can kind of just keep mid range and, and mash your um, thousand slap move, and he'll usually go into it and take chip damage. Small amounts of damage, but it adds up. And I mix that in with a little torpedo, and he does get hit by torpedoes pretty often. So it's a good combo without getting super aggressive. I don't like to be right up on this guy. Because he's kind of dangerous at close range. Not quite as dangerous as uh, Zangief, which we'll see in a little bit. But still pretty dangerous to get super close to. So I like to keep mid-range with this guy and just have him like attack into my slapping move, which I'm mostly spamming from about mid-range. Because you see, he can pull some bullshit if you get too close. He's a little dangerous. He's pretty fast. And the damage he does, you know, it looks like small hits, but he gets a lot of them in. So it does end up adding up, as you can see. You see, he pretty much annihilated me on that round. So it doesn't always go well. 
But when I get it right, he will attack into my slap move like this. This is what I'm going for. This is what I was trying to explain. I didn't demonstrate it too well until this round. So now we're seeing a little bit of what I'm trying to explain. But this is usually what I do when I'm successful. So I'm staying at about mid-range and I'm spamming that, you know, thousand slap move. And he, he mostly hits himself with it, you know. Now, something about the button mapping or the game is that sometimes my character throws out this pixie dust or some bullshit. And that's gotten me killed before. And I don't know, it's like a taunt move. But I don't know why it's mapped to the regular punch buttons and shit. I, I always hated that in fighting games. So now we're going to see Zangief, which is similar to the Saddam fight, but he's not as dangerous as Sodom. So... He's still dangerous, though. If you get close to him, he has massive throw moves that uh, take off a lot of your health. So the main trick is to, to kind of um, use jump slaps to push him back, and immediately when you land, you want to be hitting the that thousand slash. So you want to kind of... Because when you, when you land, you're going to be real close to him, and it's going to push him back and do a lot of damage with that slap move. So you want to just do jump slaps and then come down with that thousand, uh, thousand slap move. That's mainly what I do, but if I see that I'm getting too close to him, I'll jump back and slap, just to get some distance again. You don't want to stay too close to him. If you're right on him, he'll he'll usually get you. He's very quick to grab you. I mean, I'm sure the AI probably cheats too, because in these games they can always do shit that you can't, and they always they don't take damage like a normal player would. So now here is Sagat. This was the main one I wanted to demonstrate of these extra fighters. If you get him, he can be hard, but the easy method that I found was similar to uh, Vega or M. Bison, you know, the real name. But similar to the last boss, um, this guy really falls for the torpedoes. And the thing is with him, he doesn't do a lot of low fireballs for whatever reason. He's normally going to try to do a high fireball, which is perfect for the torpedo move, as you'll see when I get it right. Here I'm kind of fucking up my inputs, but, you know, when I get the torpedoes consistently, he usually gets hit, see? Because he's always going to go for that high fireball when you try to do the torpedo, it seems. So he just keeps getting nailed by it. And the thing that's good about the torpedo is it goes right under the high fireball. So it's a perfect way to dodge it and hit him at the same time. So that's the easiest method I found to deal with him. It works really well. You can be very aggressive with him if you want, but he's dangerous because he can dragon punch your, your thousand slap and he can get out of it very easily. So if you're aggressive, you are taking more risks. I, I would recommend playing it safe and going for, you know, just keep spamming torpedoes and he'll usually fall for it. See, here I am spamming torpedoes from the back of the screen again. And it also gives you enough distance after you bounce off of him. You know, you get some distance away from him and it knocks him back. So you can just keep spamming torpedoes and you don't even need to use that slap move. You know what I mean? You could probably beat him pretty easily just by doing torpedoes like that. Just spamming him. So yeah, those are all the different tips and things that I learned when doing the 1cc, so um, hopefully you'll find some of that shit useful. If you have any questions, let me know, and thanks for watching.